Hello and welcome to the video. This is a maiden flight and how you set this thing up. Now this is the Zake, still not sure how you say it, 800 from Jumper. This is their new VTOL. Now I've done a couple of videos already talking about a couple of things about it and I wasn't going to make a video until they released a manual. However, lots of you have already ordered this and been in touch a little bit freaked out about the other videos I've made and panicking in case they've bought a lemon. So I thought, you know what, let me just make a video and kind of get this thing in the air and see how it flies to hopefully put minds at rest for all of you that maybe have already placed an order for this thing. Now, as I'm recording this on the 1st December, we still have no manual. So everything that I'm about to show you, I've just basically had to figure out. So jumper thumbs down for not having a manual ready still. Uh, we're kind of two weeks into making videos on this thing and Jumper hasn't sorted it out, but hopefully this video, if you're getting one, will help you set your radio up and how you fly the thing. And the other important thing to remember is there are two links below. One to an RD pilot thread. The developers over there have got these things and are playing with them, finding lots of ways that the setup and the tune can be improved to improve the flying performance. But that isn't quite here yet. So I thought, let's just fly it as it comes out the box and see what it's like. But do keep an eye on that. I personally will be doing when they figured out some of the tweaks, like for example, the ESCs could use BD shot, which will allow much faster response times for the motors and ESCs. That will allow the tune to be improved. It's just one of a whole list of things that they're finding as they're kind of looking through this thing. The other bit of news I'm recording this on the 1st of December is that I'm very pleased to say that Jumper and a gentleman called Stephen, who's the chap behind the Mini Hawk VTOL project, again, that's the 3D printer version that this thing looks like it's based on and now talking and I really hope that that means that they both get an outcome that they're happy with out of those conversations. I think there's been a lot of pressure from the community on Jumper to make that happen which is good but it shouldn't have taken that pressure for Jumper to reach out to that project before the product was released that would have been the better way to do it. So here are a few key stats on this model as it is about to fly. First and foremost is the weight. This is weighing 746 grams with a 4S 2200 Gen Zace Endurance Pack in the back. The props are counterclockwise for the front left and rear. So the first thing to talk about then is how to set up the radio for this model. Now the one that I got here came with a little jumper radio that had everything set up already. All of the channels were already set and things like the Yapu telemetry script, which is very commonly used with Ardu Pilot, was already on here as well. However, I find these radios particularly small and I'm actually not a fan of this particular radio. However, it does give me the opportunity to set up my Radio Master TX16S and show you how you need to set up all the different channels. So here we have my radio. Let me just make sure all the switches are not in the right place uh, or are, and then we can fire it up. So this is running Edge TX. Haven't updated it to 2.8 yet, that's on the list. And then what we'll do is we'll go through and let me just show you the settings that you need. First thing we need is in the outputs or the mixes to have it set for aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. Those are the orders that you're going to need. Channel five needs to be set to go high when you arm the model. Channel six needs to go high to initiate return to home. And channel seven needs to go high to arm the model. Channel eight is going to be a three position switch for your modes. I'll show you in a minute what modes they are set to by default, but very quickly they're Q stabilize, fly by wire A, and cruise. So I've set it up here, I've tweaked mine a little bit. So my arming switch has three positions. In the middle position, it arms, uh, and also, which is channel seven, but also sends channel five high, which is needed because it's express LRS. Channel five needs to be high to turn on all the goodness. If you move the arming switch to the top position, that initiates channel six to go very high. That will kind of cause my return to home. But you can have those on individual switches. But basically what you're aiming for is AETR. Channel five and channel seven go in high with an arming switch. Channel six, going high when you want to do the oh dear return to launch and channel eight needs to be your three modes. Don't forget to add 
Yapu onto the radio as well. I can't get mine quite working here with Edge TX. If you have it on the radio, then Yapu will give you all the telemetry information about satellites, battery, voltage, and all that great stuff. I'll put links down below that talks about how to install the Yapu script. In terms of the setup in Mission Planner, I haven't changed any of this. As I said in the introduction, this is probably suboptimal. Let me put it that way. I'm sure if you keep an eye on that thread that I've listed down below, the Audio Pilot developers will be able to figure out a much better way to do this. There is an option to increase the speed of the updates to the ESCs that should provide a much better performance for the ESCs and motors, and that potentially means we could improve the tune. Let me go through, though, a couple of things on here, just so you can see how this is all set up. Again, all I'm doing here is just plugging into the USB port at the top of the flight controller. This is how it comes all set up. I haven't changed a single thing, which is why I wanted to make this video, just to show you what it's like out of the box. So if we go into setup, into mandatory hardware, let's have a quick look in here. Radio calibration is something you absolutely need to do. Once you have got your radio all connected, um, to bind it, it's just three power cycles for the ELRS receiver in this one, so there's no bind phrase. Go in there and calibrate your radio. That's essential. Then servo output, you can see here we've got all the different motors, the tilt motors for the left and the right. Everything's all set up. Again, haven't had to change anything in here either. Then the next one is going to be flight modes. The three flight modes by default on mine are Q-Stabilize, which is kind of the VTOL hovering, Fly-By-Wire A, which is your standard kind of fixed-wing flight mode, and Cruise. Those are the three. Now, it's a little bit of a weird one here, because Q-Stabilize wouldn't be my choice. If you're learning to fly Q-Hover or Q-Loiter instead of Q-Stabilize is better. But this is how it comes. Again, we may tweak things. Return to launch is set for the fail safe, which is exactly how I would want it. And if we go into the config, the only other th things that I have changed, just FYI, this is the um, PID, this is the tuning stuff. Again, I think if we're using BD shot for the ESCs, which I think they are capable of, we should be able to improve this tune. This is, um, you can actually see here in the QP extended tuning, this is where we decide what channel six and seven do. So again, channel six is return to launch, channel seven is arm or disarm rather than use the sticks. So that's where you can find out where that was. Again, I had to look through this to figure it all out. The only thing I have changed is this thing here. This is the OSD type, I set it to one for analog, set it to three for the OSD for DGI, and then I move things around on the screen. It's actually working very well. There is a cable that comes in the box, which you can solder onto an air unit light, or you can plug in the back of something like a full-size air unit for DJI, or you can use with walk snail or whatever. And that is pretty easy. That just plugs into the front. So they've done a lot of the hard work for you. Now I'm using a Cadix Nebula Pro here and an air unit light. Uh, so I have soldered it on and plugged that cable into the front of the flight controller. The camera cutout did need a little bit of modification to fit the camera in, but some swift cuts with an X-Acto got it in no problem. There was a requirement for a lot more airflow over that air unit because these things do run quite hot. So I cut some air holes and some channels into the hatch cover as neatly as I could. This is actually quite a thick top cover, so you can take quite a bit of material away. There is a little of the top of the camera kind of obscured by this little shelf above the camera. Um, isn't ideal. Again, an Exacto could take care of that. You'll see how much of the view it cuts off in a moment. In terms of the other mods, there's only a couple. I've cut recesses into the base of the wings for the servo connectors that I've already shown. I did solder a longer power cable onto the PDB in the battery compartment as the one that supplied wasn't reaching the packs that I'm using here. Again, I'm using the 2200 4S Endurance pack from Gens Ace. I placed the antennas to sit vertically for both the DJI uh, unit light and the supplied ELRS receiver. Again, that ELRS receiver is version three, but it doesn't have a bind phrase. It's a power cycle three times to connect to it. And that was about all I've changed here on this thing. 
Key stats are the flying weight for this with that 4S2200 is 746 grams. The props, when you put them on, it's counterclockwise for the front left and the rear, and the front right is clockwise. No details on the central gravity. Again, at the time of recording this, I still don't have a manual from Jumper. I've just had to figure all this out. I, I've got my CG about 30 millimeters back from the leading edge. Interestingly, it looks like that is also the same place that Mini Hawk recommend for their 3D printable version of it. So let's talk about what it's like to fly. Now, I've tested it on the bench and I know it arms, and I've also done a very quick test hover just to make sure that I can arm it. It's going to get a GPS lock, that there's no weird issues. If you're having trouble with arming, the thing to do is plug it into Mission Planner on the bench and try and arm it, and it will tell you on the screen exactly what the issue is. Now, there isn't a compass on this, so your stability isn't going to be fantastic. Uh, having a magnetometer would have been one of the things that I would have liked on here, but then it does mean that you have to calibrate it every time you fly. So out at the field, we need to power on the radio and the model. We need to make sure that we're in the Q stabilize mode where the props are pointing upwards so that when we arm and apply power, it's going to hover. Wait for the rear LED at the back to go red. It'll be flashing blue and then it will flash red. That means it has a GPS lock. If you have the Yapu telemetry script on your radio, then with the telemetry coming back, that should also announce that it has a GPS lock too. You arm it using channel 7 on the radio and then you raise the throttle and away it goes. Now to transition, you need to get enough height I would recommend 100 feet, it would be the best way to do it. Ideally have it pointing into the wind if there is a bit of breeze. This particular day it was perfectly still. And then once I'm happy, I'm gonna flick the switch to transition from Q stabilize into fly by YA. And the transition was very smooth actually. Once it's happy that it's flying okay, the rear prop stops and I'm just flying around in fly by YA mode very small amount of current being pulled here it's only a couple of amps these are large relatively slow props on this thing and it's a big flying plank there's a lot of air surface it's very very easy to fly and it appears to be trimmed pretty well as well yeah, it looks great once you are in fly-by-wire mode, it just behaves like a very, very well-behaved flying wing and is a joy to fly. There's no real drama at all. The only thing that was frustrating me a little bit was the fact that that little bit of foam that you can see in the top of the FPV image here on the top left-hand corner, that was kind of getting in the way. I'm definitely going to have to figure out a way to either mount the camera slightly further forward or potentially just use the Exacto and cut chunks out of the nose so I get a nice clear view. It is an awful lot quieter when it's out of hover mode and it just pootles around. Current draw when it's flying like this is only a handful of amps. So even with the 2200 milliamp hour pack, endurance isn't going to be terrible. But the big thing I found with a lot of VTOLs is it's the conversion back from forward flight to a hover that can be a little bit tricky. So let me just show you one of the conversions here. Now, actually, it's pretty drama free. And the conversion back from forward flight into hover means that immediately the motors snap up into the top position, all motors start to produce the lift, and it basically slows down in the air. Once it does, then it's about gently descending into the ground. Now, as you see, a little bit of oscillation here. Again, this may be improved by a BD shot for the ESCs and slightly improved tune, but no problems at all. It does the transition, and I can bring it into land nice and easily exactly where I want it and disarm. So the good news for all of you that may have already ordered this is that it does fly nicely on the stock settings as it is supplied. However, with those improvements from the Ardu Pilot team, I'm pretty sure it can perform even better, particularly around some of the instability after a transition back from forward to hovering flight. So do keep that link below bookmarked so you can keep an eye on it. If there are any significant updates to this model, I will make a follow-up video. But the continued lack of a decent manual from Jumper does mean that videos like this are going to become more and more important. And maybe that was Jumper's plan all along, is to get the community to kind of do this stuff and kind of do their job for them. 
I really hope that isn't the case because that's not really the way to go about it. This is a professional product. It should come with a professional manual. And I'm also very happy to hear that at least Jumper and the Mini Hall Project are now talking to each other. Fingers crossed that works out for both of them. So as a cheap VTOL, this is a very good option. Remember, you can get about five or six of these things for the cost of the SMO VTOL that I looked at in January. I know a couple of my friends are very interested in getting one having seen this in action. Is it perfect? No, I don't think it is. But with a little bit of work, it is a very fun flyer. And it's one of the cheapest ways to get into VTOL without having to learn all about quad plane and do all the setup bits and pieces. So again, links down below. Do keep those in mind, particularly that RD Pilot link, if you get more of these, because we may get a much better improved setup that'll make it fly even nicer. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.